Next. Why Olympic athletes are poor. July in Paris. 10,000 athletes are floating down the Seine for the opening ceremony of the 20... Yo, you see they added breakdancing into the Olympics? I feel like we're just added anything at this point. And I'm not... You know, I understand the, the competitiveness of breakdancing, but I don't know. Yeah, it was funny. No, y'all are all thinking about that Australian woman who did interpretive dancing, and it was fucking horrible. The, the actual break dancers that were, like, doing, like, cool tricks and shit, that was entertaining. When I'm watching break dancers go on a one-on-one -on -one battle, and it's, like, the, the mic, the guy on the mic's like, eh, eh. I'm like, dude, this is not, this is not, this is a sport. How do you represent your country in break dancing? How do they determine who's better at breakdancing than somebody else? That's what I don't understand. What are we looking for here? I would, I like, even in gymnastics, I know they have, like, more, more dance-based things outside of, like, the pommel horse or whatever. But even so, there's still, like, ways that they grade that more. Like, what's, how do you determine who wins in a breakdancing battle? Just a few hundred meters away in this McDonald's, several employees are flipping burgers and asking if you want fries with that. Who do you think makes more money? The athlete or the McDonald's worker? And it depends who. McDonald's workers in general are going to make much less money than uh, a high-class mm, athlete in the Olympics. But if you're, uh, if you're like the third best 5,000 meter runner in, in for fucking Moldova, you're probably not going to make that much. If unless you're like a high-class athlete in the Olympics, you probably don't make enough to where you're able to retire, uh, or not even retire, able to just do that job full time. Especially if it's a very niche sport, like the fucking break dancers, that's not their job. Like their main job, they have to have another job. They might teach dance classes, do something that's, you know, equivalent to their career. Now, if you're Noah Lyles, or you're Grant Holloway, or you were Usain Bolt, or you're Simone Biles, or you're somebody that is doing a sport like swimming track uh, in, in a very popular event like the 100 the 200 or like in swimming the 50 meter uh freestyle 100 meter freestyle things like that you're gonna get paid a lot like simone biles probably has like fucking 30 40 million dollars she's rich right she's one of the most known athletes in the world but on the alternative the pommel horse guy everybody know the pommel horse guy that clutched it up for the men's team and he has the glasses and he's like he they called him the specialist that guy probably doesn't make enough money from gymnastics alone he probably has to do other things. And yet, it's the McDonald's worker that earns almost 50% more than the average athlete. The International Olympic Committee gives... Sidney McLaughlin makes millions of dollars a year. I, he better go over the athletes that don't make a lot. Because every, every, every athlete you can name that's an Olympian makes a shitload of money. If, 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 the, the one, it's, it's the fucking 99% that don't fucking have any recognition and they're just like a random runner for fucking Norway. Like, they're not making anything. Absolutely no money to Olympians, even if they win gold. But if you're somebody winning a gold medal, you're probably going to be able to make enough. Even if you even if, if you win a gold medal, you're not going to make enough by just being an athlete yourself, but you're going to have so much credibility that you'll be able to coach people and make a shitload. But why not? And how do athletes make money? It turns out that the answer is more complicated ads yeah who the hell's gonna sponsor who name name any 5,000 meter runner in the olympics name any one of them unless you are a track nerd you can't right if i ask you name people that run the 100 meter yeah you're gonna be able to fucking list off a few but if if i'm like hey names name somebody outside of kipchoge that runs the marathon you're gonna be like the i don't know and you're not, even though fucking 500 guys run it. Welcome to athletic interest and the business of being an Olympic athlete. To fully understand the business of athletes today, we need to look back at the evolution of the games and its prices. The ancient Greeks believed that- They used to give you like limbs of an olive tree from like Zeus or some shit. Dude, that's so badass though, being an Olympian back in like the fucking- first few olympics just running I, i'm pretty sure like all the events in the first few olympics were just like running the games were created by their gods and you know damn well they were all slow as fuck you would have i i guarantee you i would have dusted their asses i'm not even trying to be mean i'm just saying you give me you you put me in the olympics today i would fucking sm it, it, not in the olympics today 
in the in the fucking second third Olympics, I would have dusted them. Oh my god! No, you wouldn't. They were all probably short because people it, people have progressively gotten taller and taller over time. My strides would outmatch theirs. Okay, maybe if I had to wear like their their shoes, that would fuck me up. But if I was able to wear my sneakers... The foot race became symbolic of worshipping the gods. It was also believed that the gods spent a lot of their time atop Mount Olympus wrestling and jumping. Soon there were 23 disciplines represented at each Olympics, which were held once every four years. 23? The early Even then? It's had no Nike sponsorship, so many decided to compete naked. People from all around the fucking... European area coming to watch a bunch of naked dudes run run a hundred meters and then call it a day. Oh my god, butt naked, like no fucking shoes, no no socks, no just fucking ass naked. The first official winner of an Olympic event was Koroi Boss of Ellis, the baker. You'd be sitting there watching the guy run. Olympic winners did get other rewards. Wealthy supporters would often donate cash prizes, VIP tickets to special events, and lifetime passes to dining clubs. Some athletes got statues in Olympus. Most were given tax breaks and enjoyed a life of celebrity. Being an Olympic champion was good business, but the cost of entry was high. The first Olympic champion may have been a baker, but most that followed were sons of wealthy landowners and traders. Getting to the Olympics required an athlete to train all year round and compete in up to 300 smaller events across the Mediterranean. Only the rich had- Oh, they had other events? I thought the Olympics was like the only thing. They had like sports where you would like go run in like Spain to fucking show that you could run in the Olympics in Greece. In, f in BC times? That, I did not know that. The ancient Olympics ended under Roman rule. After a 1500 year gap, this guy founded the International Olympic Committee and organized the first modern Olympic Games. To remember the old days, Athens was the first host city. Much like in ancient Greece, winners were awarded olive branches. But the modern games also introduced the medal system. Confusingly, the winner received a silver medal while the runner-up received a copper medal. The oh, they didn't have a third place? The third place was unrewarded. The gold, silver, and bronze system was only introduced in 1906. Wow. Like the ancient athletes, Olympic champions received no money. This is thanks to Coubertin's other invention. A rule that would shape the lives of athletes for generations. That they could get sponsored? And change the way sports operate until today. To compete in the Olympics, you had to be an amateur. That meant no sponsorship contracts and no money for participation. A rule that was upheld strictly. Take they don't uphold that shit anymore. Oh, I remember this guy. He ran with two different shoes. James Francis Thorpe, winner of the decathlon and pentathlon at the 19... Yeah, he lost his shoes, so he's wearing, he's wearing a shoe that doesn't fit him. 12 Stockholm Games. Notice his mismatched shoes. Thorpe's own pair disappeared from his bag before the race. He borrowed one replacement from a competitor and found another in the trash. <laughs> Neither shoe was the correct fit. That's hilarious, though. That man, that man ran, that man ran and won wearing shoes that weren't his, one out of the trash and one borrowed. Why didn't he borrow both shoes? After seeing Thorpe's performance, the so Swedish maybe. king labeled the American the greatest athlete in the world. Thorpe returned home as a celebrity until a chance interview with one of his former coaches. The coach mentioned that Thorpe had briefly played baseball for a semi-pro team, earning $5 per game. So five dollars a game and they probably took his goddamn medal so the amateur athletics union challenged his gold medals because he was not a genuine amateur athlete thorpe was found guilty authorities entered his house removed his medals and sent them back to stockholm thorpe can be considered a victim of the ioc's desire to keep the games pure money was almost viewed as the first performance enhancing drug a powerful tool for modern that's so cringe the whole point of being an athlete is that you're the best of the best. And wasn't the original Olympics also people that had to compete and prove that they were able to do it? So now we're going to make it so only, only people that have never played a professional sport can do it. It's like the same thing with that one guy in the fucking free throw contest. And it was like, 
you could have never played basketball professionally, and he was like a D1 athlete, so they fucking removed it. The IOC's early idea of amateurism was modeled from English upper-class sportsmanship. Rules designed to keep the lower and middle class from competing with the elites. The traditional Henley boat race excluded any man that received money as a mechanic, artisan, or laborer. That left the aristocrats and their rich children. As the Olympic movement grew, the traditional wealthy European athlete was replaced, but the strict amateur rules still remained. Brands did start giving free equipment to athletes. Adidas gave shoes to Jesse Owens. The same sh Do you think I okay, a lot of y'all don't know about track, but for the people that do, do you think Jesse Owens would be able to compete in today's realm? Like he ran some fast ass times on like shitty track shoes on an on like a like a charcoal a charcoal track like if you know about jesse owens the way track has changed a lot of the records are broken because of the equipment that they're able to use today some of the runners back then might even be faster than like usain bolt it was not not necessarily usain bolt but be faster than a lot of the guys that are winning the olympics today it's just they had shittier conditions, so obviously they're going to run shittier times. The IOC didn't allow personal sponsorship, but overlooked free equipment. But in 1968, Puma took things too far. Tommy Smith and John Carlos had just completed a gold-silver finish for the US in the 200 meters. When the national anthem played on the podium, both athletes bowed their hats and raised a gloved fist. An iconic protest against racism. But that wasn't the duo's only iconic moment. At the start of the medal ceremony, Carlos also removed his shoes and raised them above his head. The Puma logo purposely pointed to the waiting cameras. Perfect marketing for Puma. It was also for free, right? IOC rules are very clear on paying athletes. Except Puma did pay. In fact, Adidas and Puma were secretly paying athletes thousands to wear their shoes during the games. This became the worst kept secret. I mean, that's not even. I, I literally every single athlete is wearing Adidas shoes. Literally every single athlete is wearing Adidas shoes, and these motherfuckers of the IOC weren't fucking realizing. Huh? They all have the same fucking branded shoes. They're all wearing the same exact model, and from the from Adidas, and they hold up the shoes when they fucking win. It took them that long to figure it the fuck out. This became the worst kept secret in Olympic history. If the IOC investigated, most medal winners would have been disqualified. So the IOC simply ignored it. But it knew- Probably got rid of the rules, because then every athlete ever that won a medal would just be disqualified. This was the end of an era for amateur athletics. They'd be given the gold medal to fucking 15th place. In seven Didn't even make the finals heat. He won, the IOC relaxed the requirement that an Olympian must be an amateur. In the 80s, they even allowed athletes to have sponsorship contracts. This marked a huge turning point in professional sports. The IOC could simply no longer afford the traditional rejection of economic gain. The Montreal Games in 76 made a loss of almost $1 billion. Yeah, dude, the, the Olympics never make money anymore. Facing bankruptcy, the IOC came up with a brilliant new invention. Exclusive sponsorship deals. The games have had sponsorship since the very beginning, but for many years, anyone that wanted to become a sponsor could arrange some sort of deal. In theory, both Pepsi and Coca-Cola could sponsor the same games. The IOC began signing partners for specific categories. Coca-Cola became the official and exclusive beverage partner of the Olympics. The IOC now had less sponsors, but each partnership was far more valuable. The 84 games in Los Angeles show this switch, making a $200 million profit. The organizer even appeared- Yo, LA in 2028 is going to be a fucking- that, that city's gonna cat- that city's gonna blaze. That city is going to fucking set on fire in 2028 summer when they fucking host the Olympics there and motherfuckers have to deal with LA traffic plus, I don't know, 30 fucking million people. Not 30 million people. A lot of fucking people showing up. It already is. Oh, it's a shit show right now. Uh, let alone when they when they hold every fucking country's athlete in that city and then have to fucking deal with it. The bright side is other countries have to build other stadiums. Like when they, they had it in Beijing or in Paris, they had to build like three different ones. Or in Athens when they had it in 2008. Like those, or 2008, 2004. Anyways, a lot of countries always have to build new stadiums and shit to hold what they need for the the olympic athletes 
LA already has that shit because it's a fucking huge city, so they won't have to build anything new. But, dude, where is everybody going to stay? Like, people are probably trying to reserve spots now to stay in LA in 2028. I would love to go to the Olympics in 2028. I guarantee you it's going to be, I don't know, fucking five grand to just stay there. So, surely a lot of this money has trickled down to the athletes. Not exactly. In an Olympic cycle, the IOC earns more than $7 billion. The directors share about $50 million in salary. Athletes get nothing. Well, at least not- I'm not trying to shit on the Winter Olympics either, but the Winter Olympics kind of blow in comparison. The Summer Olympics is nostalgic and very fun to watch. The only Olympic sports in the winter that I want to see are luge, bobsled, and speed skating. That's all I care about. Everything else- Mm, don't care. Like, you, you ever see when they put on cross-country skiing and it's just motherfuckers going... So how do Olympic athletes make money today? They have to rely on three sources of income. Salary, prize money, and sponsorship. Let's look at them in more detail. Prize money, they're re you're really kind of... F salary. I mean, salary might be from a company. You're probably factoring salary out for the majority of athletes. Sponsorships are only given to the people that have prize money. So if you don't have prize money or a sponsorship, you're making like nothing. Each of these can vary depending on which- If you're not winning a country you are representing. Singapore pays $737,000 for a gold medal? Singapore offers $700,000 to any athlete that wins gold. Triumphant Russian athletes are given free houses and luxury cars. Houses? And yet, most of the major nations offer far less to their athletes. Yeah, jack shit. Wait, 36k a year? Wait, so you get paid that for the rest of your life? For the rest of your life? What do you mean? US gold medal winners receive $37,000. If you become a ninja warrior, you get 1 million. Instead of price Yo, Ninja Warriors fucking sucks. I hate that show. Hate that show. It was fun to watch the first, like, I don't know, two years that that bitch was out. And now it's, like, the same two commentators. He's going up the warp wall. The warp wall. The warp, the warp wall. Dude, sh suck a fucking cock. Stop talking about the fucking warp wall. I, it's hard to go up. We get it. Some nations offer yearly salaries to allow athletes to focus on training. Despite rep That's crazy, dude. Living in the UK and being an Olympian is fucking great. Presenting the biggest economy on Earth, some top US athletes only receive a few hundred dollars per month. Athletes that want to make it to the Olympics are forced to look for other ways to make money. Many turn to brands for support. This has led to a large imbalance in sports. Let's take two athletes as examples. Usain Bolt and Megan Kelmer. Both met- No idea who the fuck Megan Kelmer is. I'm get 15 million a year, 5,000 a year. Winners at London 2012. Bolt is one of the most popular athletes of all time. This comparison may seem a little unfair, but it shows the huge difference in earnings between athletes. In 2012, when Bolt was arguably at his height, he earned more than $20 million. The majority wow. of this money came from Bolt's sponsorship deals, including a massive $9 million per year from Puma. Per year?! They only have the Olympics once every four! So earned a few hundred thousand in prize money and up to $250,000 per track meet. While Bold is living in mansions and driving 250k a track meet. Yeah, they offer bonuses if you win. Not even just in the Olympics. They have a lot they have like the Diamond League. There's a lot if you if you if you watch track, there's a lot of very prominent events that they have like there's probably like four or five a year. If you win those events and you're under like a Nike or Adidas or Puma contract and you win, they usually give you like a bonus. Megan Kelmer is living the exact opposite life. Kalmer shares a $1,000 per month house with a wow. fellow athlete. When her old pickup truck breaks down, she has to find a mechanic that takes monthly payments. For her Olympic bronze in 2012, she received $10,000, but not before the government took their cut. Shortly after returning from London- That's wild! The government pays you and then taxes you on an Olympic medal. What? What? You Just give me less money! What the fuck? What the fuck? 
Yo, I, if the, if if the government's giving you the money, that shouldn't be taxed. Like the U.S. going, hey, here's thirty-seven thousand dollars for first place. By the way, we're gonna take like seven of that. She now works a part-time. Somebody said track's the worst sport, buddy. There are so many more sports that are worse than track. I and I'm timing you out for that shit-ass take because you're just trying to gaslight me right now. Desk job and grows her own food to get by. Olympic rowers, even those with medals, do not get much attention from sponsors. Nike, Adidas, and Puma save their marketing money for football and basketball. For every Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps, or Simon Biles, there are thousands of Megan Kelmers. More than a decade after London 2012, and five decades since the IOC allowed athletes to be professional, the gap between rich and poor in sport has barely changed. The majority of athletes around the world do not consider themselves financially stable in the U.S. And what's wild is like point like point one seconds in a hundred meter race is a lot, right? To lose, if you run a nine point nine and you win, and somebody runs a fucking ten two, they're way worse than you, right? They lost by point three seconds. But that's the difference between making 5K a year and 500,000 a year. Funding from Olympic committees for athlete support is being cut each year. Meanwhile, the cost of equipment, nutrition, training, and travel only increases. So some athletes are forced to look for other employment. There are now sheep farmers, mechanics, and Buddhist priests that spend their spare hours training for Olympic gold. The uncomfortable truth is that most professional athletes earn less than the lowest level McDonald's worker. This is why more and more athletes- That, see, stop saying that, because that's like- yeah, if you're saying just their prize winnings alone, that's true. But the average Olympic athlete is making more than the average McDonald's worker because the things that they could do with their uh, athletic prowess is probably enabling them to get jobs that are better than McDonald's workers. Athletes are starting their own businesses to get less dependent on salaries and create something beyond their sporting career. Oh my this... God, and if you want to start one, make it with Shopify, cool. The Olympics are only every four years. Yes, the athletes have reached the pinnacle, but they are only at the center of attention once every four years, for a few weeks. Olympic committees need to spread their funding across hundreds of sports and thousands of athletes. A lot of this money comes from sponsors. They need public interest to maintain these sponsors. That means prioritizing support for the sports and athletes that engage the most people. It's the harsh reality. These athletes need to offer a return on investment. It works the same with athlete sponsorship. Adidas or Nike can only really activate their partnerships every four years. For the rest of the time, the athlete's exposure is worth far less. That's why even the biggest Olympic athletes don't get as much as the biggest footballers or basketball players. These guys have more opportunities each year to win when the world is watching. Not even more opportunities to win, it's just they're just on TV more, right? Like if it track, the majority of Olympic sports are not popular sports. Yes, they have basketball in the Olympics, but like you're not just casually trying to tune in to a fucking kayaking match. Like, you're, you're only really watching the, yeah, soccer's in the Olympics as well, but the World Cup's taken more seriously. But regardless, it, it, say there's 50 Olympic sports in the Summer Olympics. I don't know how many there actually are, but say there's 50. 47 of them you never watch unless it's an Olympic year. To make matters worse, the Olympics has Rule 40. This was the IOC's reaction to a little marketing game that Nike was playing in the 80s and 90s. Adidas was the official and exclusive sportswear partner of the Olympics. So Nike is technically blocked from making any advertising that links to the games. Not that this has stopped Nike's marketing team. They perfected... No, they could still wear the shoes and do sub like subliminal messaging. The art shit. of ambush marketing. At the 96 games in Atlanta, Nike put up billboards around the stadium and handed out Nike flags to spectators. There was barely a TV screen that didn't show the Nike logo. An easy way to do ambush marketing at an Olympics is to have an Olympic athlete in your advert. People instantly make the connection without Nike referencing the games. The IOC realized this and introduced Rule 40. This blocked athletes from featuring in any advertising with a non-Olympics partner for the duration of the games. Bro, that's the so cringy that they do that because they don't, doesn't the Olympic, the IOC isn't even paying for the fucking Olympics. It's the country itself. 
Like when the Olympics happens in the United States, we're paying for it. Like the United States is uh, specifically probably Los Angeles or California is going to be fronting a lot of that cost. The IOC had cut off every athlete's biggest earning opportunity. At the moment, when athletes are most valuable to sponsors, they are quite literally banned from advertising and making money. But in 2019, a German court decided that Rule 40 could no longer apply to German athletes. The court said it was unfair for athletes to be blocked from maximizing their earnings, while the IOC failed to give them a share of the sponsorship money they were supposedly protecting. In response, the IOC decided to loosen Rule 40. Paris 2024 will be the first games where athletes are allowed to feature in non-official adverts during the games. Although Yo, wait, really? I didn't even pee. I didn't even pay attention to that. More athletes, more spectators, and much more money. But the prices for the athletes still the same. It's one thing that the IOC is not paying athletes directly, but giving the money to its member federations. But sometimes it looks like it's trying hard to make sure that the money stays as far away from the athletes as possible. That's actually kind of sad. I mean, dude, that's the same thing with a lot of shit. It's just not even, it's not even just the Olympic brands. It's a lot of brands. The Olympics are like that blockbuster movie everyone talks about. Filled with stars, drama, and eye-watering budgets. Yet when it comes time to pay the lead actors, the credits start rolling. Wow, what a great ending. That was a nice video, though. I enjoyed watching that. All right. Next.